I'm Tony Scar with BNet TV. Welcome to the wrap-up show here at CTIA in Wireless 2012 in New Orleans, Louisiana. I am joined by an esteemed panel of guests here. Gene Foster from Newstar, Dave Butler from MasterCard, and Joe Kafari from PCD. How is everybody today? Great. Fantastic city, great food. Um, and I want to thank Gene right out of the gate for having uh, brought little goodies to the show here for us. We've got some new star hot sauce. For all those of you who are watching the live program, you can tweet uh, in your questions at, at BNET TV. You can email in your questions at CTIA at BNET TV.com. And if you're lucky, you might be a recipient of one of these lovely jars of hot sauce. We'll see if maybe our panelists will give them up or we can coax into giving us some more. Oh, I'm sure I can find some more. Okay. For all the people out there who are watching, why don't you uh, run through the list here and tell everybody what each one of your portions of the ecosystem is about. Sure. So, uh, Gene Foster, I'm Vice President of Carrier Services at Newstar. Uh, most people will not have heard of Newstar, but we actually touch your lives every day. So, if you're ever changing your phone carrier, we're the company that enables that. If you're going to vote for, you know, like text vote and on your favorite TV show, reality show, we enable that. Where the company is going to enable you to have the digital rights to any movie you buy now in future. You know, if you buy a movie with ultraviolet, we enable that as well. So we touch people's lives every day. Hi, Dave Butler uh, with Mastercard. You've probably heard of us. Um, I'm a vice president. I run the Open API platform, um, which is a new way, a new delivery channel for uh, the types of services that we've been building up over the last 40 years or so. Uh, we made a couple of announcements here at the show. Um, we've made some really new sort of contacts and partnerships and we're really looking forward to taking us to the next level. And I'm Joe Kafari. I'm the CMO at PCD. I'm the only one on the panel without a great accent, so <laughs> you'll be able to tell my voice from everyone else's. And PCD's been in the wireless handset business for about 30 years now. And we, again, touch your life every day and we supply a number of different handsets and different devices to cellular carriers throughout the world. So, you know, a lot of the macro trends that we're going to be talking about today on the show, um, throughout the number of years that everybody has been attending either the CTIA or the GSMA shows or whomever else, we've all seen the pendulum move from one side of the ecosystem to the other where certain um, adoptions were happening and driving forces had changed along the way. Um, and I think that you, everybody would agree that at some point a number of years ago, the consumer started to be the driving force because the handset enabled us to be able to do so much more to the point where it caught a lot of people off guard. Maybe we weren't as prepared as we were, but we sure are now. And there's a lot of wonderful things that are happening and the technology is very fruitious to the point where it's probably leading the globe out of an inter a global recession. Um, so I want to go right with you, Joe, and say, hey, listen, what are some of these leading handsets that you guys are seeing being pushed in, um, in certain geographies? So in the North American market, the smartphone market adoption is continuing to grow. Uh, you're starting to see the phone continue to evolve. This is my 20th year in the business. When I started, it was all about the safety and security that a cell phone provided to what was then an elite class of consumers. Now it's not only an elite class of consumers, it's all consumers. It's getting to the point where it's really not seen as a device other than something that makes your life easier. We don't have them as adults. We have them as adults. Our kids have them. We communicate with them. And now you're seeing the evolution in 2012 and in 2013 is it's evolving from our communication device to our banking device to a device that allows us to be connected with the world without even knowing it because they're devices that are embedded in our cars. So it's truly evolving in uh, North America to a connected environment. In South America, there you're seeing smartphone adoption, but not quite at the same pace that you would in North America. Um, Asia is obviously growing tremendously in the smartphone market and in Europe in the same way. The other market that continues to grow that you don't see a lot of um, talk about is the whole prepaid market. And prepaid was this kind of uh, small segment that was consumer challenged individuals and now it's become not just consumer challenged individuals but folks who want to have a corporate account with their data plan so that it's covered on a monthly basis ahead of time as opposed to a prepaid cellular phone. So it's, a, it's really changing and evolving quickly this year into um, less of something that we needed and something we have to have in our lives throughout the day. 
Dave, would you say, and 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 um, Jean, would you say that both of your organizations have been driven then by the the handsets and what the consumer wants? Do you feel like there was any lag time in there? Do you feel like maybe there was something you should have, you know, we should have been on this a little bit sooner, but we're there now? I, I think, I mean, if you think about what's happened over the past few years, it was all about speeds and feeds and, and the yeah. network. You know, what you're seeing now in the industry is about, as you said, it's about the consumer, but you know, it's really about not just the applications, but the types of communications that we now get. You know, to, to his point, it's it's all about target. You know, it's all about, you know, like the device we use all the time. So you need to be very targeted. It needs to be very relevant to me in terms of the communications I get, but also needs to be secure. And it has to be a communication I opt into. So with the development of the handsets, we're now getting into an environment where we can have very rich targeted communication communications for you know for, for marketing for healthcare you name it healthcare because is one of my favorite arenas yeah. yeah from our side really a firm like mastercard having your credit card data really can't afford to move as quickly as we would normally do um, we protect credit card data security and privacy is very very important to us nevertheless the opportunity that apps on phones bring to us um, are tremendous um, we have 15% of the world's uh, commerce at the moment is electronic. 85% is still cash. Mm. We used to um, ask questions uh, when we were briefing. If you were uh, in a hotel and had a fire alarm, um, and your choice, you know, what would you leave the room with if you could take one thing? Most people would take the mobile phone with them. Right, absolutely, yeah. no question about it, for sure. Yeah. So we're using that really as a pointer that we need to enable M-Commerce um, securely with the MasterCard protections, etc., um, and make it a ubiquitous device to support everything you do in your yeah, life. In your so life. The, uh, the Mobile Marketing Association had come out with a, the, the report last year where they had mm -hmm. conducted the very similar stat that said, hey, if you left your phone in your wallet at home, which would you go back for? And people say, you know, I can borrow $20 from a colleague for lunch if I have to, but if my phone's at home, forget about it. I, I'm, I'm back on the subway. I, I have to go get it. It's well, not my life. Unless, unless you can use it for your, your payment. That's right. <laughs> well, it, well, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's my point, right? Yeah. You don't need to borrow $20 yeah. anymore, and I guess that was the flow in for yeah. you, right? Tell us about the fact that you don't need to borrow $20 anymore. Well, um, our open API is designed to provide the types of services that allow application developers to incorporate M-Commerce into a mobile application. Um, we have um, a number of services that are really sort of pushing the boundaries of innovation. Um, we have a payments API, which provides a very quick route to actually incorporating payments onto your phone. But the big announcement we made at the, at the show is the PayPass wallet which is a tremendous system that really leverages the types of security. We're beginning to see NFC secure elements in phones. Simply, a merchant can take um, a bug, a JavaScript um, library, put it onto their web page, and immediately enable payments that incorporate um, a wallet of, of credit cards that a consumer can select. And, the experience is fantastic. Yeah. So that being said, the amount of applications that need to be written, is that going to drive more phone sales? I think so, because I think what's happening is when you have brands like MasterCard that are now participating in this, it's not, not that small brands aren't important, but when you have the might behind a brand like MasterCard and the security associated with a company like MasterCard, companies like mine that are on the device side feel much safer, feel much more mm. that okay. they're in the hands of a trusted brand. So as device consumers come out to buy their devices and you see an application and it's secured by MasterCard, they're going to buy that device where they might not recognize a brand right away. And it might be a fantastic brand. It might be a fantastic product, but it's a trusted brand that sells more devices. Good point on that, yeah. good point. And I think what's really interesting now is, is you know, people are used to having to, you know, the applications on the phone, but if you look at um, you know, MasterCard and what they're doing now, what Newstar enables, it's taking information from multiple sources. It could be from an operator's network. It could be from a third-party data source making those available through open APIs and standard APIs to create much more targeted and rich applications and communications. So, you know, it just it has to become more and more pre prevalent. Each one of you are sort of in different areas of this ecosystem, but yet still all on the same team and playing field because each one of your businesses drives another. What are some of the challenges that you all feel still exist between each one of those segments and how are you together trying to, as the ecosystem representation, uh, you know, get, get, get through that? 
So, so my, my customer base and the people I have relationships with are the operators and my goal is to get them to open up their networks and those information assets on their networks to make this available to application providers. Um, and the biggest challenge, and I spent a few days with uh, our, our advisory council in, in DC over the last few days, the biggest challenge they have is they've got all of this great information and asset, but they're afraid. They're afraid to give it out, they're afraid to use it, they're afraid that you know, they'll damage their brand, you know, that they'll be used in a uh, uh, you know, correct way. You can't blame them so much when, yeah. you know, every time someone comes out with a news story that says, well, you know, Apple was really looking at your data, yep, and absolutely. All, all heck breaks loose. Right? So, so that's going to be the biggest challenge is how do you over, overcome that? And, and it really needs companies and brands like Ustar, you know, like MasterCard that have got strong brands, but also strong positions of trust in the industry to provide new services. Uh, believe me, my job would disappear so quickly if we let privacy um, out no of the question about it. Absolutely. We spent 45 years becoming a highly trusted brand. The real task we have is to figure out how we can bridge that gap um, so that uh, consumers that are happy and, and confident that the types of services we're offering actually do bring value and don't actually risk their own privacy. We okay. don't want to spook people out. And I have to bring to, to, to market devices that don't necessarily dramatically change consumer behavior. Right. Because today, we're very quick to pull out our card. Changing that to pulling out our phone is just different. And there's a demographic that's still very hesitant to adopt. It's still the same demographic that's hesitant to adopt a smartphone, right? Mm. There's a younger demographic that much rather have just their phone on them than a, a wallet. No question about so it. It's, this mass that's out there that we just have to make them feel, again, with trusted brands, secure in changing that consumer behavior when they're in the grocery store, that they just put their phone on the scanner and it Bang. takes care oh, of the transaction and it's yeah. done. But and the same way the, the $20 loaning, right? Yep. Right. That makes so much sense and we all think about it, but do we do it? And it's just a matter of maturing the market and the market trusting the application mm -hmm. and moving in that way. I know. It's really easy to use a credit card. Yeah. It, it, it is very easy to do. Too and, easy. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I think you imagine people at MasterCard uh, for making it easy to use yeah. the credit yeah. card, right? I yeah. mean, the PayPal is a fantastic system, no, no question right. about it. But, you know, carrying around multiple items, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I lose things that, all the time, right? Yeah. So the less I have to carry, the better it is for me. Right. No, no question about it. But as a consumer, I know that I also want to have some relevance to the, the things that are, are going on between you three. I want to have a device that's going to give me the, um, the, the ability to move between different applications that are smart with the information that I want. I want it to be secure and I want it to be fun and contextual, mm -hmm. right? I want it to be geo-oriented. I don't want to be receiving tons of ads on my phone you want that spam. aren't relevant. Yeah, I don't yeah. want spam. I don't. Yeah. I don't want spam. But I want, so the only way to make that happen is for me to say, you're allowed to have my info. Go nuts, right? right? Give me the stuff that I want, but you know. But it's what you consent to, and then right. that, that's key, you know, so, so think about if you're on the internet, you know, we're all used to getting hit with ads all the time that may yeah. or may not be relevant. It's annoying, but it's, but it's just annoying. If you're getting ads on your phone, or text on your phone, you're paying for that yeah. in some shape or form. So mm -hmm. that's why it's absolutely critical now that the industry think about much more targeted and relevant communications again back to opt-in, following MMA and CTIA guidelines right. of opt-in so that we only get communications we want. So is that when we're opting in, then are we allowing, uh, are we then consenting? Yep. Are we consenting when we download an app? Most people consent, yeah. but they don't read that. what they're consenting to. Well, I think South Park had a great episode about yep. that in the iTunes period, <laughs> right? For sure. Uh, yep. It's fantastic. I mean, how do you sit and read something that's, you know, 15 pages long on, <laughs> on a screen this bit, size? Right? Like, yeah, I consent. I just want, I want it, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's a challenge. What are we going to do about it? Nobody jump at once. Uh, well, I'll give you, I'll give you a view of, of how actually we're approaching this industry and we're approaching it from um, the best practice of what they call double opt-in. So, so let me give you a real live example. I, um, you know, I like to shop for shoes, and uh, That's you know, strange. I recently, I recently bought a pair of shoes from a very nice store in DC, and they, uh, they said, hey, do you want to be part of our mobile marketing program? And I consented, and I got texts, and I get these random texts, you know, that said, hey, we've got a promotion. But if we actually had something that was much more targeted that says, you know, Jean Foster's in, you know, in DC, she's near the mall, right? Okay, based on my location. <laughs> Got her. She's got, she's got an iPhone, so instead of sending her a text, send her a picture. Right. 
and we can link into the CRM system and know what I bought recently so they send me something relevant. Okay. That is very targeted communication to me but it also scares the hell out of me if I haven't opted into that. Okay, that's right. fair. So, so the tools that we provide our, our users is to enable that the processes and the steps that said I opt in okay. and then I secondly I opt in a second time to say you can absolutely send me communications. A MasterCard side, I trust as lawyers and privacy officer are like a bad rash all over the services. <laughs> they are the barrier we have to get through. And right. Rightly so. We actually adopt the world's most stringent regulations and then add our own on top of it. There is too much fraud out there in the entire globe not to rely on the best practices of companies like MasterCard mm -hmm. that we that we entrust our lives to on a regular basis. Yeah, so I sure. don't think that consumers are going to disagree with any of the policies that you're going to throw up, but I do agree with Gene that, you know, I probably want things that are a little bit more relevant to my lifestyle than I hair laser removal that I, that I get from Groupon. Yep. Uh, and I think that you would agree with me that the devices that y'all are selling, they kind of have that ability. Yeah, and the, the device today is it's becoming so complex that whether you opt into certain you know opportunities and not the consumer behavior is driven by an economic incentive as well so if the economic incentive is great enough to stimulate me to opt in opt in there's also that side of it as well is that with the pervasiveness of all of the Googles of the world that know my buying patterns know what I like and can reach in and say wow he hasn't bought yo frozen yogurt in almost 24 hours. He probably needs a coupon. <laughs> you know, there's that opportunity as well for the, the advertisers to take. And if you look at where the advertising trends are heading, it's totally into the M space, right? The total mobile space is going to be the new advertising frontier. Mm -hmm. If you think of a mobile device as a really beautiful high-rise apartment in Manhattan, it's extremely valuable real estate that advertisers absolutely have to be on in the next five years. Do we vilify the large companies like the Googles of the world because they have been, they've had some negative press in maybe the way that they've used our data unconsentingly? I, I, I had this conversation with some customers yesterday on a, on a personal level, you know, I still use Facebook, I still yeah, use Google, I, still, I, I know yeah. the risks that I'm taking, but that the benefit and the upside, you know, what I gain from it is, you know, it's a trade-off. It is. Um, and I think, you know, and especially with a younger generation, they don't even think about this now. Right. That's their you communications know, so, methodology. Um, it is. So I think what people are concerned about it, they're concerned about privacy, they're concerned about Google storing your, your data for tracking. You know, I think we all make a, a judgment call that, you know, the, the, it's a trade-off in our okay. personal lives. So. Um, MasterCard has a lot of our personal data. You're not necessarily sharing it with anybody, but the trends that... No, I know, I know you're not, absolutely. No, you're very secure on that, absolutely. But you do trend yeah, internally. Yeah, data, there's a lot of effort putting into doing that. And that costs a corporation a lot of money to do. It does, yeah, it certainly does. And but utilizing that data is important <coughs> to your business. Well, it is, and what it enables us to do, but the trend mechanics are very important. I mean, it's, it's very valuable data because you can base whole businesses Right. By simply anonymizing the data and then further sort of buffering it, abstracting it out, like a, a color coding, red, orange, green, um, you protect the individual data, but then give that overall picture of you know what the average is. Okay. Um, it's difficult to put into words. You have to see it. No, I, can, I can understand where you're coming from, but with your new open API wallets, right, right you're now collecting even more <coughs> digital data at a faster pace about our spending habits, which is a good thing right. if used in the right way. If used in the right way, and, and I, um, we, we're doing a similar initiative. We, we recently acquired a company called Targus Info, and, okay. and that they've spent 15 years you know, collecting, building profile information, anonymizing it, but providing very targeted information to, you know, to the communications industry, to advertising. We start to package that into the mobile space, as you were saying. You know, it becomes a very powerful tool for advertisers, for retailers, again, as long as you protect the personally identifiable inf information. Maybe this is a good example. Um, the skateboard phenomenon from years back. Like okay. Everyone was buying skateboards. Um, we would anonymize the data and actually show that there was a trend that people were buying skateboards. Okay. That's a great example. That's a fantastic data. example. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't think that the pu the general public um, or the personal user would have a problem with that. Right? Right. They, you know, I, I think that's a great thing to show where those trends are because you're only going to get more personalized sales opportunities that are good for my life for yeah. sure. Right? right. Now, when I go back to Mastercard to try and sell that, <laughs> well, fair enough. Yeah. There's barriers that would pre pre prevent me from doing that. Mm -hmm. that that's I really big. have to persuade everybody that it does make sense to do this. There's real value, and that we're not really infringing on anyone. <laughs> okay, let's turn around a little bit and say, hey, if we have to re-educate, re-educate is the wrong word, if we have to continue to educate the public on a regular basis, what are some of the things that we as, as heads of the ecosystem here can do a little bit better? We have to build up trust. Um, I'm very, very skeptical. Um, I'm of the age group where, you know, giving away my personal data, which I know is valuable for free, does not strike me as an economic bargain. Nice point. Or free. You want yes. you want to be paid for your efforts in some manner, in some fashion. Exactly. Yeah. If you can persuade me that I am actually getting some benefit from signing up with your service, then I'm more likely to consider doing it. Okay. If you try and hoodwink me, all bets are off. Okay. Nice. Nicely said. And I think what you'll see also is that there's a catch-22. There's the app security, right, that we talk about. Then there's a general device security, mm, which point. there's the trend going in that direction that are driven by folks like MasterCard that come back to the device manufacturers like us and say, you need to create a separate persona in the phone so that I can segregate the consumer's information away from any kind of uh, private data that is going to uh, be part of a transaction. And that's a technology that you're going to see adopted into devices so that the device itself in its entirety becomes more secure as opposed to just the application side itself. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so the, 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 the challenge, and again, you know, Newstar being in this position of trust and neutrality, we want to make sure that we are supporting the industry on this, but at the same time, we don't want to over-regulate it. Right. So the challenge for us in the position we play in the industry is how do you get that balance, probably a similar one that you have, is how do you get that balance between you know, making sure best practices are adopted, making sure the right tools are in place to allow people to get those adopted, but not erring on the side of, you know, you can't store any I'm information. into the text code campaign during Dancing with the Stars, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And I know that you're collecting that data at the, where I am, I'm obviously watching it, right? This is the commercials that are paying, this is my geography, this is where it's coming from. It's powerful data, yeah. right? That somebody can utilize yep. for sure. And I'm entrusting you all, right, at, at, out of the gate to be able to do that. But I also want to be marketed too, because clearly I'm liking Dancing with the Stars. Yep. But maybe you'd like to have a separate persona in your phone that's just for texting into Dancing with the Stars that's aside nice from your Very nice point. you know PCD provided device your enterprise okay. devi decided device so that now you can actually split Fantastic. the OS okay. into s so. so it's really reaching down into the phone and forcing the device manufacturer to be able to provide to information on a secure basis so that when that transaction occurs it's away from my contact list it's away from my GPS settings okay. it's away from all of my corporate contacts, so this email, brings everything. Up BYOD, right? Absolutely. For corporations, we all know that it's extremely cost effective to get into just mm -hmm. people bring your own phones. Awesome. That's right. But we as corporations now have to worry about enterprise security. Um, and you, as the personal people also bringing your phone to work, want to make sure that when you're texting into Dancing with the Stars, that your corporation isn't getting, yep. you know, yeah, um, I can't believe she person. likes her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, your shift changes <laughs> right. because the CFO is like, "Well, I didn't like that person. I can't right. leave the thing." Yeah, <laughs> we, I've just you know, personally seen in, in our own company and across the industry just a, a, a huge shift in people using their own devices. Right. You know, everybody wants to use their iPads now right. for work. So, I don't want to yeah. carry my laptop when I'm traveling. Right. I want to take my my uh, you know. And we as workers are better when we are using our devices that we're comfortable with that mm -hmm. aren't. Um, unsanctioned by our corporations so we can sit and watch Dancing with the Stars but also continue to do some work on our tablets and or devices right. and there needs to be that segregation those are the challenges that exist how are you all going to deal with it? I think the interesting challenge that we have is then you just articulated it very well Tony is that I'm actually making you be able to work longer Right. You are, you are. I'm ruining yeah. your vacation. Absolutely ruined my vacation. No uh, question about and it. It's, yes. And it's the, the device. Thank like you, I was starting, Thank I started you. the conversation out. It's no longer my cell phone. It's my device. It's it can be the device. remote control on my TV. And in some cases, it makes voting easier. You know, it's yeah, so it's yes. it's really evolved into a different level of 
consumer interaction with it. And for us, that has to be secure, regardless of your, your M commerce play or anything. If you're buying an application, your credit card information's in the device, it's in the OS. It has to be secure. Okay, all right. What have you all seen here on the floor during CTIA that is a good industry trend that has made you proud? Um, I'm very fascinated at the moment about the whole area of machine to machine. Okay, and uh, so there's, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased to see there's a lot on in that space because I don't think we know what that can open up for us. Big thank you to Michael Crane for the MDM Pavilion on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean that's just it just opens up endless possibilities for us. You know, I mean we right. do we we have we have services where you can text to a TV set instead yeah. of a phone, but you know we're now looking at okay how do you do text between you know your equipment you know your your refrigerator, your your cars. I mean, this Gene, is just you're out of milk. Better yeah. get it on the way home, but, but it's necessary, the, right? The, but the right. possibilities, if we if we crack this, the possibilities are endless. Gene and I think that's what. Right? Um, yeah. About the MM uh, device marketplace and said, hey, by 2016, you know, we're talking about you know billions of devices being connected. It's a big market. Yeah. Yes. Big it's market. Commerce. Yeah. And I think for my part, I've been on booth duty most of the time. Okay. But the uh, the ideas, the energy, and the creativity of people coming up to talk to us, um, it's really sort of interesting seeing how the sort of bounds of possibilities, mm -hmm. that people pick up on what we're doing and sort of run with it to the next stage. And all we're doing really is just providing some tools for people to go off and build yeah. things. That's really interesting. I like that. A lot of energy in there, a lot of creativity. I like hearing that. I agree with the MDM, MDM front. It's been one of those technologies that seems to just be always coming. It's it's always a few months away. Right. And right. I think we're at that point finally where the ecosystem is finally mature enough that you can process those transactions. And for, in a greedy device manufacturer way, if we're selling millions of devices a year, think how many automobiles are being sold a year. Think how many washing machines are sold a year. Think how many utility meters. Coffee makers. Everything. And it's really the mobilization of consumer electronics that for the next 10 years is going to keep us really busy. Getting particular messages from the M to M marketplace on our devices so that we can more ferociously manage our lives mm -hmm. is going to have a big effect on commerce. Yeah, and I think that that's a really important point, right? There's going to be less pressure on the system overall mm -hmm. if we are effectively bringing down the cost of our own personal lives by using the technology. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just, we've seen examples, you know, you know, all the electronic or electricity companies want you to save power during the day. If you can just pick up your, you know, your phone and switch off your power and turn <laughs> down <laughs> your, <laughs> your power during the day, you get rebates back from your service mm -hmm. provider. Which means so, you get to buy more shoes. Which I, you get to buy more <laughs> shoes, which is always a good thing. Which we like because there's more transaction <laughs> <laughs> Which seems to go down those lists really, really well. <laughs> Final question to you all. If you had to give the industry a letter grade as a professor, what would it be and why? Can I differentiate between um, the can, U.S. and the rest can, of the world? You can, you can. Yeah, absolutely. I, you can. I, uh, as, a, as a U.S. citizen, uh, despite my accent, and uh, living here for many years, I think from a mobile perspective, the U.S. is still behind the rest of the world. Okay. You know, we're just, we're not adopting and making the services available that the rest of the world has adopted. Yeah, and I think the, the consumer experience is absolutely critical in this space. I mean, we've been skirting around this issue during the discussion. Until people are keen to adopt this because their experience is really good, we're always going to be just yeah. behind the drag curve. And I'd say we're a solid B. There's a lot of room for growth yeah. that it, just the three of us sitting here for 20 minutes, we uncover such a tremendous opportunity for transactional commerce. The stimulus, stimulus to the economy as a whole is phenomenal, right? If we could all spend money easier, it's not that it's just spending, it all comes back in the whole ecosystem, is that Newstar is gonna have greater revenue, MasterCard is gonna have greater transaction revenue, people are gonna buy more devices. It's interesting, the, the world around mobile that we sit in the middle. You know, we are all a lucky little crowd here because the amount of years that we've all spent within the industry, we've seen that pendulum swing back and forth, mm -hmm. right? You know, it was great for a certain while, and then it was like, oh, geez, I don't know. It's like, oh, okay, you know, it's going to be a rough go here. And then here we are at this particular conference, and everybody, regardless of the challenges that still exist in the portion of the ecosystem, is still really excited to uh, to, to tackle that challenge. Yeah. And that's and really cool. Storms, right? right? Yeah. Make some great yeah. 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 Yeah, it's an exciting challenge. You're not, you're not afraid of it anymore and you know that each one of your partners are going to be there to have your back 
to help with whatever that challenge is because it's going to affect their revenue on the bottom line. They, Absolutely. They know. Yeah. Thank you guys very much for taking the opportunity to speak with us. It was a fantastic Thank you. panel. I hope we get a chance to uh, do it again in the future. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening in New Orleans. Thank to all of you out there in Bina TV land, thank you for joining us throughout the day. Don't forget to tweet in your questions and email in your questions. We will be live back on the floor here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with the Tower Summit. Folks, I'm Tony Sklar here in CTIA in New Orleans with Bina TV.